Okay, everybody, it's that time, time for Free Tip Friday. I'm Kate Richberg, and welcome, if you're watching live, it is February 16th of 2024. I could not tell you where this month has gone. February is already half over, um, so here we are. Let's make some bangles. Let me take a bracing cup of my tiny coffee, drinking my tiny coffee. Let's see who's here. And today I have a special treat. I really uh, wanted to give a big thanks, as always, to our friend Allie Mori. You know, Allie does this out of the goodness of her heart, and I am always over joyed and sometimes overwhelmed by her creativity. Um, and this project, uh, does not disappoint for sure. So let me show you, gosh, so many people are on here. Allie, everyone loves your projects. I know my friend you're watching, at least I hope you are. So it's great to, uh, to have you all here. So many people from all over the country and the world are here. That's great. Um, let me show you real quick this piece. You you saw it on in the newsletter. Let me show it to you again today. Um, Allie posted these up in the um, in our group uh, in our bead table group, and you folks loved them. I love them too. I was like, wait a minute, what? Um, this was actually really similar to an idea that I had for these beads when I bought them, but I actually went in another direction for the great bead extravaganza. Um, and Allie's idea was actually much better than mine. So I love it. So we're going to go over how to create this really cool bangle, how it's going to fit in with all of our leather bangles and stuff. I have a couple of ideas, a couple of riffs that I'm going to go with, uh, as well to share with you. This is kind of a, um, you know, uh, design free for all kind of, I want to give you some basics, um, and you can play around with those. Let me add my other camera here. And before we go any further, my friends, let me tell you that you can find us everywhere. You know, the drill. Facebook, Pinterest, Insta, hit us up on all social at beadshop.com. Hit that like, subscribe, notification button. Thank you. Thank you for subscribing to our YouTube channel. We're so close to my goal of 100,000 viewers or 100,000 subscribers. Make my dream come true this year by subscribing. I'm really excited about that. Questions, hit us up at info at beadshop.com. Uh, we're always there on the other side of the computer for you. So another great big uh, thank you to all of you who have been super patient with me um, and getting out all of your live uh, uh, purchases from our live broadcasts, your um, mystery bags uh, that I did, gosh, it seems eons ago, um, and then the mystery boxes from Tucson. All of that is happening behind the scenes here. I just uh, almost finished with your mystery bags, the cool and the warm tones. I think you're going to love them. So watch for some shipping notifications this weekend, um, as, as well as the remainder of the shipping notifications for the live uh, stuff that you bought during our live sales. Um, the baskets that those of you bought in that second round, those are going to ship at the beginning of the week. So I'm still waiting for the right big box. There was a little bit of a shipping delay, so I don't want to ship them in something that's flimsy. So you'll see those ship out. So thank you for your patience on that. Um, we have some more fun live things coming for you at the end of the month, uh, but that's a ways away. So I'm not even going to put my mind to it. But um, I think you folks are going to be super happy with those. I hope you are. It's been such a joy to put them together. So I really, really appreciate your, um, your uh, patience on that. Uh, Jolene says she can't wait to get her bags. I'm excited. 
Um, Donna, hello, my friend, Donna Chandler. I just put something in the mail to you yesterday. She says, hello, Kate. Thank you for doing the video and special thanks to Allie for sure. Um, we've got, um, Janice over here saying hi to everyone. Thank you, JP, for being here. Um, we've got Margaret saying hello to everyone. I just love how you folks, even if I'm late getting on the broadcast, there is so much chitter chatter going on with all of you. It's like friends hanging around uh, the water cooler. You know what I mean? I love it. So um, it's really, it's great to have all of you all here. So um, again, a big, big thank you. Julie, I'm sorry I didn't run into you in Tucson. I know that you were there the same time I was there, but maybe next year we can run into each other. Um, and Jennifer is ready for some jewelry making fun, as am I. So let's get to it. Uh, let me show you. Um, I'm going to put up Ali sent over. She sent over a couple of great, um, a great uh, uh, tips for her uh, pieces. So let me show you. Um, oh, and my friend, Allie, kisses, kisses to you. Uh, you know, I could extol your virtues, virtues all day, but uh, thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you. Um, okay. Uh, can you, I'm tearing. I don't know why I'm so emotional. I don't know. I feel like today is kind of a day where everyone's together. We're all hanging out. I don't know. Maybe it's, I don't know, middle of the month, whatever. <laughs> Do some let down. Who knows? Uh, let me get over here. Um, here are Allie's pieces here that she shared. I'm going to put it right in the middle right here. Actually, let me add this one in. And then it'll go over to the side, maybe. Hang on a second. Let me try that again. No, it still goes in the center. Doesn't matter. Um, here's a kind of a nice shot of all three of the ones that Allie created. You can see here that we're using those barrel beads that I got a while back um, that I did in the, um, uh, in the, I guess it was one of the trade bead flash sales I did or something like that. Um, anyway, you folks love them as much as I do. And sometimes using these kind of heavier, bigger beads like this, just one is really all you need for the focal. So what Allie did was she created this really cool bracelet with the um, magnetic clasps on the end. She used the five millimeter clasp, which I have here to show you. Um, you can uh, use that. It's that nice, it's that same cool clasp that um, uh, Michelle used on her, uh, she was showing on one of her pieces, that nice flat one. And I'll show them to you in a second. What she did was she showed us, she sent these instructions. And this is the time, folks, if you want to do a screenshot, screenshot this. Can you see how, here's the, the layout. We've got... Uh, glue all ends of the leather, including the macrame ends, into the clasp with zap gel. Now the core of this piece equals two strands of 1.5 millimeter leather or a single strand of two millimeter. Okay. So what she did was, and Ali, if I'm not mistaken, I'm guessing that you started by putting the large hole bead on in the center, added some beads for the focal to kind of highlight that focal section. And she began the macrame next to that large roller bead with one millimeter leather. Um, macrame, 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 all the way down into another roller bead and then glued all of those ends in and just repeat it for the second side. Okay. So last chance, screenshot all of this, and then I'll put it up before we end as well. Okay. So let me double check your comments before I, and I am correct. Hooray. Shoo. 
Um, let me see here. I'm looking. No questions. Okay, great. So let me show you how I'd lay this out. I've got some other things here that I want to show you. So let's get to it. Um, I grabbed some random stuff here. All of the big beads that I have here. Some of these we've sold out on. Some of these we still have. Any beads that have large holes. And let me show you this again. Um, not all of them have that focal. See this one here? Whoops, let me do it this way. See this one here? Oh no, I'm going to go back to that one. See this one here on this slide on the bottom left? It's that uh, that trade bead that we carry with the dots. I just love that one. So it doesn't have to be one of those large barrel beads. It can be any bead that has a large hole. Can you also notice with that bracelet how um, Ali used a clasp rather than a magnetic clasp for that. And I'm going to show you how that works. Okay. I want to show you that too. So I've got a whole bunch. I've got a whole mess here in front of me. So let me start making some sense out of this. Let me zoom out just a hair. That's a little too much. So let me fix everything. You can see kind of the mess that's going around on my table. So the barrel beads, you can see, they have pretty large holes. So two strands, you want to test it out. You want to test out your leather. So what I have here, here's some two millimeter um, I have sitting around here, which is really pretty. Or some 1.5. Here's that really bright blue that I've got. Um, let me see. I've got the one point. This is also, this is 1.5 right here, I think. Um, I also want to show you a couple of tricks with this big four millimeter, the big leather. I'm rustling around. Can you hear me? Can you hear me rustle? And then I've got a whole bunch of one millimeter leathers here. Okay. So whatever colors, I, I'm, I'm going to make mine kind of colorful, um, I think. I don't know. We'll see what happens. But um, I don't know. I just feel like I need some color in my life right now. So let me um, grab. This is a good one. That's a good one. I don't know. They're all so good. I don't know. Maybe that blue is one that I want. And then here's some of the smaller ones here. Maybe something like that. Let me slide all of these then back in here. These feather ones, those were really good too. We'll have some more large hold beads. You know, I'm always on the lookout for large hold beads for you folks. Um, they just... You know, my love of putting things together with on leather cord. So large hole beads. If you missed out or you're watching this later and we don't have these exact ones, rest assured that more beads will be coming with large holes. All right. Uh, oh, my mom was saying, yep, yeah, this is great. This design would be great for a Lamport glass bead for sure. Large hold pearls would look great. Um, for sure, they'd look great. We've got some large hold pearls coming for you next week. Stay tuned. Those would look great. So I'm going to get this two millimeter and I'm going to cut myself plenty of thread right now. Um, this, my design board is about 14 inches or so. Um, and that's what I'm going to cut for myself here. Let me actually, I'm going to trade this board out. It looks kind of nice 
on the camera, but not great for um, moving things around and for the focus. There we go. It's a little bit better, I think. There we are. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and cut. Here's the 14 inches or so, like that. Straighten out this camera and clip this off. This is a, a single strand of two mil. Or you could, as we said, do a double strand of the 1.5. Just whatever fits into your beads the best. So here's that. Now, I think what I'm going to add is some of these large shadows. And I'm going to add, I said color, didn't I? Maybe that blue. Let me figure out what, that's really pretty, that absinthe in one millimeter. I like that green. I like that blue too, but I think, you know, blue and green, you can't go wrong, right? And that kind of works for it as well. Let me zoom in just a little bit here. Okay. I'm also going to cut a few, get a few of these big shadows in copper. And I think I like the looks of that. All right. So now I just want to check something real quick here. Okay, so I'm going to start by putting everything, string everything on to the center of this cord. Okay, let's see how this roller looks. The roller beads are great. Um, I think they really come in handy to bring a bunch of the strands together. Yeah, look at how pretty that looks. Maybe I don't need that shadow right next to it. Maybe this wants to go right up next to the bead. Yeah, that's better, don't you think? Now, let me do the other side here, this one and this. Now, if we're paying attention to the length, of our piece. My wrist is about six and a half inches. So this already is over an inch. This is about an inch and three quarters here. Okay. So if that's already plus the clasp, the clasp is maybe another half an inch. So that's already going to take me up to about two and a half inches. So I really only have um, about one, two, three, three and a half inches, four inches, really four, four inches or so to work with right here. Okay. So, um, so you need to take that into consideration when you're doing this macrame. Oh, you folks are funny. Would you like to rummage? I'm always, I'm always rummaging, right? Always feels like I'm rummaging around. It's because I've got so much stuff here to play with, for sure. I've been collecting for a long time. Um, okay, so let me just start by doing some macrame. I'm going to go ahead and get some clips, and I'm going to clip this down. So it'll be a little bit easier for me to macrame with all this. Now I'm macrame, as I said, with the leather, but you could use anything you liked to macrame. I think these bangles look nice with the one millimeter. 
Um, you could also, if you wanted to glue this in place, you could, but I don't think you need to, right? What I am going to do is I'm going to fold this. I'm going to find where the, the center or where the end of this kind of is like so. I'm going to slide these beads away and I'm going to come in and I'm going to clamp that onto my board right here so I have a place to start with my macrame. Okay. And I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to go a little bit further so I've got enough to work with here. Now, what I'm going to do also with this, so I keep in mind how long I need to make this, I'm going to make a little, just a little measure on my, on a piece of paper here. So I know this length here is about two inches, okay? So I'm going to macrame down the two inches from the center of the bead on both sides. That will give me enough to um, start to figure out like the length with the clasp and everything. And then if I need to add just a little more macrame beyond these two inches, then that should be okay. That'll be easy to do. Here's my one millimeter. Um, I'm going to use, this is a yard. Let me see. I'm going to go about 36. I'm going to go about 40 inches. Just 36. 40. It may feel like a lot, but I don't want to have to add. And since honestly, this is the first time I'm doing this, I want to make sure that I've got enough, right? So I'm going to start my macrame about right here, as long as I have enough here to play around with. So let's just do that. The macrame, you could do it a couple of ways, right? I'm going to do this flat macrame, our basic. We've got it over on our skill builders on bead shop. But you're going to go from the left to the right, the right to the left, and do a series of those square knots. Now look at how pretty I think this leather looks because the leather really peeks out in between. I like using this two millimeter. I like kind of the smoothness that it works with. Though again, you could use two strands of the 1.5. But look, with this one millimeter leather, look at how pretty the leather beneath it looks, right? I think a contrast is nice, and I wanted it to kind of pop, literally. Okay, so this is getting probably close to an inch. Looks like I've got plenty of leather. You could also do this in a spiral. The spiral, when you macrame all in one direction, so instead of switching from the left to the right and the right to the left, you just continue to go in one direction. If you want this to have a more monochromatic look, you would go ahead and do it in colors that have less of a contrast, right? But this goes pretty quickly. Okay. Thank you, Janice, for putting up the link to the macrame. Yeah, this is the absinthe color of the leather. I really love it too. I really, really love it. Um, it's kind of a light olive. Let's take a look and see where we are with my two inches. I'm close. Let me just do one more here. And you can see I've got plenty of leather to work with. Okay, so now let me go ahead and I'm going to slide this down. And I'm also going to, oh, look at that. Gorge. Gorgeous. 
I love this, Margaret. It's so true. Absinthe makes the heart grow fonder. Uh, I can relate to that for sure. Um, let me give my, me, I need a longer piece of paper. I'm going to give myself just a little, um, a little visual for measuring. Bear with me here just a second while I get a piece of paper that's a little bit longer. It's a good thing the studio isn't too big. I can access just about everything pretty quickly, but you know. So I'm going to say that my, I'm just going to take off one of these bracelets and check the length real quick. So this is that one I did with the four millimeter leather. This is, I'm going to make mine actually seven and a half inches. That's this length. And I like how it fits on me. I like a little more room, especially when I do a lot of stacking. You can see my stack here. Okay. Let me measure this one for you. This was the Innovator bracelet. And yes, I'm wearing the Innovator bracelet in black. That's coming to you next week. There's a little, um, a small um, restock of our other colors that we had. Um, so you'll see those next week. Stay tuned to your newsletter. But this black one, I'm just, I'm so digging, digging, digging. Um, this one is... This one's about seven. So somewhere, I'm going to probably make mine, well, if this covers, yeah, it's about seven and a quarter, I think, this bracelet. So somewhere in between, it just depends on how you want it to hit on your wrist. I think maybe that one with the bead, I might need a little more room because that bead has some width to it. So I'm going to go for seven and a half. Okay, let me put this back on. We were also talking bead crochet and tubular bead crochet and kumahimo and stuff with um with Michelle. And this is my tubular crochet. I used to teach it a billion years ago. Um, I don't do it much anymore, but and hopefully Emily's going to take up that with some tubular crochet, but. Um, it's kind of fun. I love all of the way that these stack together. So that's what's going on here. Let me do a seven and a half inch line. Let me make it kind of big. Let me get a Sharpie marker here. So there's my seven and a half inch. for six and a half inch wrist. Okay. So let me get my, let me find the center of that. Three and three quarters, I think, is the center. You know, let me show you my little trick. Seven and a half, fold it in half, measure it. It's this one right here. Yeah, three and three quarters is about the center. Okay. So now I'm going to lay this down. So depending on how much or what I'm going to do with the ends here, maybe I'll use maybe I'll use that round one here. I know ruler math, sometimes ruler math gets me. 
I don't know why. Here's this one, the flat. Allie's used that one. You could use this one. Depending on how much of the, the strands and stuff you might be using, you could use this one. I'm going to use, I think, the rose gold one I'm going to use for this. And I'm going to double check the size. I think this is the four millimeter. It is the four millimeter, the one with the four millimeter hole. I'm going to use that one. That's what I'm going to use. But you could use any of these. I'm going to use this one. Okay, so when this clasp is closed, this is about three quarters of an inch right there. Okay, so I'm going to put it right on that halfway mark. So I really only have maybe a half an inch left to play around with. So if I wanted, let me look at Allie's. Let's look at Allie's pieces again here real quick. Can you see how next to the clasp, Allie has used the roller bead yet again to glue the ends of her, of her um, threads into? Okay, so we need, some, we could probably get them all right into this clasp, but I think this little closure makes it look kind of nice. Um, let me also see, I might want to put on one more of the shadows. I don't know. So I'm going to go here. One shadow bead, one more macrame around that, maybe, because I can't get it through. Nah, no, nope. I need to get all of these strands gathered through, and that's not quite right. I'm going to do one more macrame, though, I think. One more. Hopefully not throwing these beads off the end. Let me put a clip on. Okay. So now we're just going to put on <clears throat> our roller. We could put on two rollers if we wanted, if we needed some more length or whatever. So see that two millimeter and the two one millimeters sit really nicely in that bead. So there's that closure. Okay. And then eventually all of that's going to get glued into that clasp. Okay. Let's play around with the second, with the second side. Okay. So what did I say? 40 inches? 40 inches might have been a little long. See, I've got a lot left over. But this would also make a great necklace design, right? So I'm going to cut mine a little bit shorter this time. I'm going to cut, let's see, 18, 28. I'm going to cut 30 inches. I'm going to cut a full 10 inches less. And let's see how that works. Okay. Uh, let me go ahead and bring this back in. Like that. Yeah, these make really fantabulous gifts, right? All ages, all genders, all of it love. You can use any bead in the center. I also brought, some of you got from the live sales, our banded agate beads. 
this would be beautiful in the center, especially if you wanted a bracelet that was a little bigger. I think you're going to need to add a little more length as the bead gets a little chunkier and has more width to it. I also wanted to mention a lot of you really loved our dragon beads that I had in the live sale. Well, I talked to our vendor, I emailed her and I said, do you have any more of those dragon beads? Because I've been hearing from you that you would really like to have some more. So she's sending me a whole bunch of them. So we're going to sell them by the bead um, and they'll be up pretty soon. You'll, you'll see them on the, on the site. I can't guarantee that we'll be able to get them in again after this, but she is sending me a whole bunch. So I hope you will like those guys. Um, so I'm just starting, I'm getting some space here, right? So there's no visible space, but it's not super tight on here, right? I'd love to explore this as a choker. This really would look wonderful as a section. This would also look wonderful as a section in a wrap bracelet, right? I'm going to show you how Allie um, added this to a clasp rather than a magnetic clasp. So let's just go down and get this going here. This macrame, as I say, with the one millimeter, it goes pretty quickly. I think this 30 inches that I cut is actually plenty. Let me get my little line about halfway there. Oh, blue dragon stem, Ellie. That would be beautiful. I think she only has them in that agate, um, but I'll keep my eye out. Um, she's got really cool, these agate barrels. So you're going to see these, um, uh, some more variations of these on the site as I find them. This is one of my favorite kinds of beads to work with. So you'll see some more. Yep, Year of the Dragon, 2024. I hope all of you that celebrated Lunar New Year had a good one. I know a lot of my friends celebrate. It's such a great tradition. So pretty. The clothes. So many of my friends, you know, in their New Year's clothes. So pretty to see. I love it. Big Lunar New Year parade also in San Francisco. So fun. Good times for sure. So let's double check and take a look at this link. So good. We are close. I'm going to actually count these. Two, four, six, eight, ten. Sorry about the state of my nails. I'm going to get them done later. Two, four. Six, eight, ten, twelve. I knew this was a little short. I've been so busy, I have not had a chance to take care of them. So this is still my Tucson manicure. And those of you who've been to Tucson know how Tucson can wreak havoc on every part of your body. <laughs> but thankfully, I didn't get sick this year which is good. I did mask actually quite a bit, so that may have helped. All right, here we go. And slide it up. All right, so now I'm going to um, measure this around my wrist. We will probably put this up as a project. Um, Mary, um, this is just what what did we call it on the slider? Let me let me tell you. We called it a barrel bead bangle, is what we called it. So I'm sure that is what we're gonna call it in the future. All right, so see here, let me let me measure that. Let me actually, I'm gonna take off. 
I can't do it on my right wrist. Let me take off all of these. <laughs> these, these clasps are so um, sturdy that it's sometimes hard to take them off. So bear with me here just a second while I do that. Yes, even the clasp is black. If I can get it off my wrist, there we go. All right. So I want this for me to fit about like this. So that is giving me, sorry, I'm trying to keep my wrist in the shot too. Let me grab my. So can you see here that clasp, that's looking like it's almost exactly right. So let me give you a real measurement on this. From bead to bead, This is six and a half inches plus this clasp. It's coming out at about seven and a quarter. So that's that's right for me. So this actually was a little too generous of a measurement here. So mine, I'm actually going to cross that out so you can remember. My finish piece for my six and a half inch wrist with this bead. Now it may differ if you use a different bead. This is actually going to be seven and a quarter inches total for me. This clasp, as I say, this is just shy of three quarters of an inch, just shy. And this, the actual beaded section here is six and a half here. Okay. So now I'm going to use that little trick that Michelle shared with us. Um, with the, um, the toothpick. I thought that was very clever. So I'm going to have the blunt end of my toothpick here. You always learn something new, right? I'm going to use that. I'm going to put that inside my clasp. And I'm going to mark it here with my pen. So that shows me exactly how much I need to cut and leave the tail so I can glue it in nicely. I'm going to try the other side. I'm just going to cut, just blunt off the end. Let me see which side that was. That was that side. So these are about the same. Sometimes clasps are different, uh, but this is the, the size, and this is about a quarter of an inch right here. Okay, so I'm going to come in. I'm going to start just one side, figure out a side, whatever. But Michelle, thank you for that tip. That is super, super clever. Sorry, I'm a little out of focus. Let me focus that in. Sorry about that. There we go. Uh, okay. So make sure that everything is nice and snug, not too tight, not too smushed up, anything like that. I've got my zap glue. I've got my, I'm sure I've got a little baggie here somewhere. I do. <laughs> Michelle. Perfect. You're welcome. Thank you for that. And yeah, so Jill is asking, uh, Jill, this is a good question. Let me go back here before uh, I go any further. I made a similar design, but the bead always ends up on the underside of my wrist. So a couple of things, the way that this is going to sit for me is it's pretty snug. Um, you kind of have to get it, I think, the sizing almost perfect. See how this bead, when it's on the top of my um, wrist, 
it, there has some movement, but it's going to be pretty hard for this to turn around my wrist that way. Okay. So I want to make it tight enough so it's not uncomfortable, but loose enough so this has some movement. Okay. So maybe make them just a hair tighter so it hugs the wrist just a little bit more. And yeah, maybe a heavier clasp underneath, right? Um, might do the trick. So we'll see how this one works. So I'm going to come in and I'm going to leave cut. Just going to use my little, my little toothpick here. And I'm going to come in. And I'm going to clip away right there. There's my end. Okay. So let me get my uh, fresh toothpick, not my measuring toothpick. I'm going to extrude a little glue. I'm going to keep my clasp together. Okay. Because I don't want to lose the other half of my clasp. Um, I want to be careful, though, and not to glue the clasp together. I'm going to come in. I'm going to get that glue in there. I'm going to put it all around the edge of that clasp. And I'm going to put some right on the end of my leather. Now I'm going to push all of that in. And I can also, if I want to, though I don't know that I do, I want to have just a little bit of room there for this to move around. So I'm going to leave it. I thought, well, I could glue this clasp down or whatever. I'm not going to do any of that. Let's hold it there and count to 10 or just so it, it adheres. Okay. Now on this other side, I'm going to come in clip away put all of this leather aside yeah 40 inches I think was too long for my macrame 30 inches might have even been a little too long I could probably shave a few inches off of that but I don't want to have my leather be too short. A little bit of glue on the end. A little bit of glue on the inside of that clasp. I need just a little bit more. <clears throat> Zap has a little bit of working time, but you have to work with it in an assured manner. So there it is there. Now very carefully, not rotating anything. Uh, let me move this out so it's not quite so close. There we go. Not rotating anything off or anything like that. You're just going to put this right inside there. We're going to hold it. Okay, and we'll let this set. Now, one of the things that Michelle said when she was doing the kumihimo was that she unclasped her kumihimo pieces so it wasn't gluing under tension. But I don't feel that there's a lot of tension here for this, so I'm just going to leave it like this. I'm not going to screw around with it. Let me put this to the side. That's that's the whole um, uh, secret to working with um, glue and getting a really good glue bond is not to screw around with it too much. Okay, so I'm just gonna let it sit. While that's sitting, I wanna show you how we might use a clasp that's a clasp and not a um, magnetic clasp. I have, 
some of those nice big lobster claws here. I'm going to use that one. And I need a, of course, I need a jump ring. So I have to find my jump rings, which is going to take me a minute here. Hang on. I think they're here. Yes. We're going to add a jump ring onto that end. I think I'm going to use, um, if I can find them here, more rustling. Definitely more rustling. The eight millimeter, if I have one at hand. Yeah, the eight mils from Nun Design. That's a gold one. Let me see if I've got a silver one here. Russell, still rustling. Here they are. That's what I want. Okay. So I'm going to grab 1.5 millimeter for this. Okay. Um, oh, and Janice, that's really good. Um, a really good tip. Let me show you that. Leather has the tension that Chinese knotting cord doesn't. It has less stretch than the CKC. So you do want to glue your clasp in a circle so it allows the leather to turn the corner like it does here. So there's a bit of room. Thank you, Janice, for articulating that. That's exactly why I kept it like that. I'm going to get rid of this glue because I'm going to put my hand in it. So let me get rid of that. Whoops, and promptly throw it on the floor. Hang on. There we go. And I'm going to kind of put this to the side, my little blue thing here. And to do that. Okay. I'm glad you folks don't mind the <laughs> so much wrestling. This is, I think, 1.5 millimeter. So let me use this. I'm going to get my clasp. I'm going to get my 8 millimeter jump ring, and I'm going to add that 8 millimeter jump ring to this clasp. If I can find another plier. There we go. So open, put that on. I'm testing this jump ring out. This jump ring might feel a little bit big, but I don't think it will be. Um, I need enough because I'm going to double this over. So I'm going to actually use a yard of base cord, a yard of the 1.5 millimeter. And what I'm going to do on the end is I'm going to tie a lark's head knot. So I'm going to go through like this, through like that, and tighten it down. See that? So that now is ready to go. Now I'm going to start, I'm still going to start in the center and macrame on down, but can you see how that's connected to that? This leather is kind of moving around a little bit. So what I might do, I think I'm actually going to glue it but just a little dot of glue, not a lot. Once the leather gets a little more supple, you won't have this issue. But I'm just gonna put that right there and hold it. Let's take a look at the photo that Allie, um, <laughs> oh, that's funny, me trying to finish a necklace this morning, if I could just find. And Allie said she used one millimeter leather. That's that's why I'm having this issue, Allie Mori. I think one millimeter leather around this would sit more tightly. So thank you for sharing that. Let's take a look at her photo right here. 
here it is. Whoops. Let me take off that comment here. So see here on the end, can you see that? And Allie actually connected this side that I'm connecting to. She connected it to a ring rather than the clasp side. But can you see how that's connected there? Larks had not macrame, 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 do that center. And then I'll show you on the other side. I don't think it matters which side you start with. Let me take this off, right? So that's why I added that little bit of glue. Let's see. Um, uh, I'm going to start... Let me get a bead, any bead. I need something that has a biggish hole that's going to, oh, I know what I was going to use. Let me move these over. And let me get a, um, a loop for the other side. I'll just use, you could use anything for the other side too. I think Allie used one of the Nun Design small loops, but I'm just going to use one of these larger jump rings here. Doesn't really matter. Uh, I've got some of these circles of copper that had nice big holes. Let me add at the end, I'm just gonna kind of make this match. I'm gonna add one roller. How am I doing on time? I'm doing all right. You folks don't mind, right? I want to explore this a little bit while my other one is drying. The thing is you need a double, you know, underneath here um, because it has to do that lark's head. Like Ali said, she used the one millimeter here. I mean, I guess I could, but I'm not going to take the time. This will be an experiment. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to clamp it here. And I'm going to just start. I've got a piece of leather that I was using before. Um, that's about two yards. So I'm just going to come in and start my macrame. This should kind of look like a wrap bracelet or our poetry project, right? It's kind of started in the same way, right? Except we're using some different materials for a little bit of a different outcome. So I'm going to macrame a about two inches. Again, I am super guessing, but based on my size of this other piece that I made, just stick with me on this. Again, this is about two yards of the one millimeter absinthe. And it gives me, you can really see that nice color down in there. Let me get a little tighter in here so you can see this a little bit better. Let me check and see if there's any questions so far. Um, oh, and see, Allie, you're so smart. The leather is spliced together under the focal. It's very smart. 
what I'm going to do is, and so what Allie means here, she macrame, 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 put her beads on, spliced the leather underneath that, um, created the two sides, put the focal beads on, and spliced the leather underneath there. Another Ali Mori splice, very clever. Very, very clever. Allie's so good at engineering things. I'm going to engineer mine in just a little bit of a different way. I urge you to experiment because it's kind of fun to take kind of this base project and play around with what we've got here. I'm actually going to make this a little. Let me see. Where are we with this? Get my little two inch length here. Pretty close. These olive ones here, those are um, also part of that. Um, those beads that we had that same. Um, that same. Uh, grouping or collection. We had some of those guys. They also have nice big holes. Now I'm going to add some stuff to the center. Okay. I'm going to add, because I want all of this leather to go under all of this. I did, Leslie's asking if there's a skill builder on splicing. I think I did a skill builder on Allie's splice when we do it for um, in a wrap bracelet. But splicing is basically cutting your leather kind of at an angle and then kind of gluing it together and covering it with some macrame or covering it with a bead. Drea does a lot of splicing as well. Um, she's so good at that. I put, I found beads that all of this leather, the two strands of each will go under. Um, the blue rollers, I hope we still have them in stock. The blue rollers are, I'll tell you, um, I had them in a baggie here. Nope, that's the absinthe leather. Um, I don't know where that baggie is. We'll have to take a look. Or Janice, you can take a look at the rollers. We have a ton of rollers on the site. Roller beads, I think, um, they're some of my favorites to use. They're really handy to have in your stash. They do go in and out with the colorways. Sometimes we're not always able to get the colors in. See how this though is, um, it's not quite lined up. We do carry the copper circles. Um, these have just aged a bit. They probably started out pretty bright, to be honest. These copper, the circles aren't really treated with anything. So they will, tarnish a bit. So that's probably because I've had these for a while. See how I'm taking that leather out, untwisting the leather that's underneath it and sliding it in. There we go. That's better. Now I'm going to do the same for over here. I think we carry these in the copper, the gold, I think in black. Um, we also carry it in the vintage brass one, African brass bead. Um, thank you, Janice. It's the turquoise Picasso etched is what that blue one I'm using. There we go. So now let me just slide all this up. You kind of have to pull the leather. Look at that. Look at that as a center. And look at this is now probably pretty, 
pretty tight in there. Look at how that'll look stacked. Won't that be awesome? I think that'll look great. All right, so I can use this bracelet also to measure. So it looks like I'm just about right here because the, the loop on the other side is going to be a little bit smaller. Let me see if I can find a loop that's a little bit bigger, maybe. Though, I don't know. That might look okay. Whoops. Oh, I just dropped some thread. Good job. Good job. Um, I really want one of those small nun design loops, but I don't think I've got one here. I don't know. I might. Let me look at my jump rings one more time. <laughs> I did knock over all of my thread. That's no good. That's going to take me a minute to pick up, but that's okay. Yeah. I think I'm just going to go with that. So these might not be bad either. Let me take a look at those. It's always good to have a good um, supply of rings. I also have some soldered rings here, the 8 millimeter soldered, which maybe is what I want. I don't know. Let's see. This might be it. That's the soldered ring. That's the open jump ring. This is the uh, textured ring. We've got a whole bunch of different rings and stuff. This might be a little bit thin. I'm going to pass on that. All right. So let me come in. I'm just going to finish my macrame here. Okay. And it is so versatile. I can make this even a little bit bigger but I'm just going to go with what I've got because that's what I've got. But any of the large hold African beads would be beautiful on here. I want you to get creative with this. So let's just start macrameing again from here. And then we'll size it. So not bad in the time that we've spent together today, created almost two bracelets. So these do go pretty fast. I want to slide, I'm sliding my finger down this cord here so that they lay side by side. Whoops, I'm getting too many cords in the way. I could come in and put, right, like another section of this on here right? As long as all of the beads go over all of these cords. Remember that Allie said she used the base cords were one millimeter in her design. So you have a wider variety of beads that would go on there if the cords were a little bit thinner. But I'm just using what I have sitting here. So I want to show you how we've got to think ahead. And Allie, I'm guessing this is how you did it. I may be wrong, but we're going to come up and before I reach the end of this macrame, I'm going to cut this off here, loop it back over and macrame over it to close it up. Let's see lengthwise how this is looking. It's almost there. So that's good. This is about where I want to finish it. Okay, so let me show you. Um, let me zoom out a bit. Not that much. Okay. Now I'm going to come in. I'm going to use this regular jump ring, just like I used for the other one. I'm going to come in, and this is another kind of a splice, okay? 
I'm going to bring this around and I'm actually going to clamp it. Okay. Now I'm going to check my length. And that looks about right. I could always add, I actually might add one more loop for this. Maybe, I don't know. This looks, this looks about the right length, actually. So Allie said she used CKC over the top for this, uh, for the macrame, which would also look great. Let me get my little sizer here. Yeah, see when it's all said and done, that's going to be a, about, about right. So what I'm going to do here is I want to hold on to this closure. Oh, and what I didn't put on was my roller bead. I knew there was something missing. Let me get my roller. My loop. Back around. Keep these flat. and shove those strands back through. So in the original that Allie used, this base was two strands of one millimeter, and the macrame was the Chinese knotting cord. And see, that all sits right in the middle. So that's good, okay? CKC is Chinese knotting cord, is the that's the, our shorthand for Chinese knotting cord. So I'm going to come in, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to glue this down here um, so when I macrame over the top of it, I've got all of this kind of covered. Now, what I could also do, this is a pretty tight fit in here. So... My guess is with the one millimeter and the Chinese knotting cord, you could come through here, cut your one millimeter away, maybe one a little bit higher, one a little bit lower, and macrame over the top like that, right? Since the one millimeter is thinner and the Chinese knotting cord is thinner, you're not going to see a big bump here. With this heavier cord, even if like I cut one here and kind of macrame over it and cut one here and macrame over it, I'm going to see a little bit of a bump, a little bit of a step. But what I'm seeing here with this roller, it's nice and tight. So what if I use the roller to reduce my threads. I'm gonna add a little bit of zap on the inside and on the outside. Look at that. Now, slide this up so the zap is going to sit inside the roller. I've got a little bit of extra zap there, so I'm going to use my toothpick. I'm going to get rid of it. I'm going to push that extra up into the roller, turn it around, get any of that extra off of there. All right. That's not going anywhere. Now I'm going to come in and I'm going to cut a 
that away. Really good question, Susan. What's the average size of the African bead holes? You know, that really, it really just depends on the bead, I think. Um, on our site with our beads, we try and tell you what the whole size is so you can plan accordingly. But it can go all the way from one millimeter all the way up to like three millimeters, right? Doesn't really, there isn't really a set size. But we do try and, there we go. We do try and measure them for you. So now, whoops, I actually, I don't want to be macrame up. I want to be macrame down. Sorry, let me reverse that. And I'm going to put, I put just a little piece of leather cord in that loop to kind of hold everything tight. And we're going to continue. And I'm just going to macrame. And you can see this is kind of under tension and that roller is holding it. If I had used one millimeter for the base, I would probably have room to shove these little tails. Again, shoving is the technical term. Pushing these little tails under the roller bead. As it is, I'm just going to have to um, glue this final, this final knot right there. So let me show you how I'm going to do that. And that's no big deal, really. Let me get my zap. Put a little bit of zap right there. A little bit of zap right there on the loop. A little bit of zap right there on the loop. And zap is the glue to use because it's a gel. It stays where you put it. If you were using GS Hypo, it wouldn't quite want to stay and grab onto the material that you're using. So really tighten it up. You can see I still have got a little zap residue. So I'm going to put it down into that knot. Take that off. Turn it. And push that in. Now, had I been thinking, you don't really see this, and this really doesn't have a top or a bottom. On this side, see, we can see just a little bit of where I cut those strands off. But if we turn it over, you can see that's super clean right there. So I would make this actually probably the, the top of where this is. So I'm going to come in, if this were real jewelry making time and not a demo, I would come in, I would let this sit for a minute, but it's set. I'm just not going to screw around with it too much. I'm going to come in and cut as close as I can without cutting it too far beyond that knot. And if I have a pen that's close to the color, this green is a little dark, but you can color that end in. Okay. Kathy, welcome. You can watch our replays over on our YouTube channel. Best place to find them. It's in the Free Tip Friday playlist. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel. It looks like you're watching on Facebook, but if you go to the beadshop.com YouTube channel, you'll see them all there. You'll see almost seven years, well, almost eight years now, of content there for you. I'm going to come around, 
I'm going to open this up and connect. Look at how great that looks like that. You could also use a, um, I use this big class, but you could use our um, rotating clasps that we have. Those would work really nice, our swivel clasps. Um, whatever, whatever floats your boat, right? There we go. So look at how great those stack. Let's put some of these. all next to each other. Wouldn't that be a great stack? Let me try this one on. I'm going to let this dry a little bit more, but let me put it over here. There we go. I think that fits just perfectly. Nice. Let me do this here. I'll put this one on. I like just these plain ones with the four millimeter leather um, and just putting them on as bangles like this and having this sit up at the top. And then we'll just go ahead and stack it with this innovator bracelet. Look at that really great stack. Thank you, Allie, so much for this inspiration. Look, I'm going to add that one right there. That'll look so good when it's ready. I'm going to let that dry just a little bit more. But so good for the inspiration. Look at that, my friends. I love it so much. Allie Mori, you've hit it out of the park yet again. I'm going to flash that um, graphic up there one more time. For that end of the leather, I ended up cutting about 30 inches. I think you could cut about 25 inches for the side right there. You should have enough. Um, for this long one that I did, I cut like two yards. I had plenty left. So you could probably even just do a yard and you'd be good to go. Um, use the large hold beads, all large hold beads for the focal. Begin the macrame next to that first large hold bead, macrame, macrame, macrame. My section of macrame was about two inches. And then put on your closure with a roller and then your clasp. Um, and then glue all ends of the leather into the clasp with the zap. Here are the variety of all of those that Allie made. You can see she used leather. You could also use the Chinese knotting cord like she did in this one. Um, that's right there on the bottom with the clasp. And it looks like Allie used a swivel clasp on that one. And she used a smaller, a big ring, a smaller jump ring. Um, and she did the lark's head on the ring side and added a cute little clasp or a cute little charm to that as well. So you're only limited by your imagination with these, my friends, Super fun to do. Thank you. Thank you. What a fun free tip. I'm going to keep wearing these. I love them so much. Well, next week we've got a whole bunch more stuff for you to create. Keep an eye out for the restock of some of these innovator bracelets and the new one coming up in the all black have a great creative weekend. You're going to see your shipping notifications go out for the rest of the live sales. Um, thank you folks so much for being patient with me. It's a lot of stuff to put together. You folks really wanted a lot of beads. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, have a fantastic weekend. Stay creative and I'll see you next week, everybody. Don't forget to, I almost forgot. So as I sign off, I will put all of the live info, hit that subscribe, like, notification, follow us on our Facebook group at the Bead Table. Questions, you know where to go. Hit us up at info at beadshop.com. Thanks so much, all, and I'll see you next week. Bye-bye.